So I'm Kate Barker and I'm the CEO of LGB Alliance. For me, one of the things I'm most, most proud of is really having, having a fantastic team who, you know, we've been through some, some tough times. Our tribunal was enormously um, stressful and it, and it took a long time and other organisations, I've seen them just fall apart when this kind of thing happens, but we are such a tight team. And despite it all, it's, it's an absolute, it's a laugh as well. It's a hoot. We still have fun, which is, um, I've never worked in an organisation like this before. And, and you know, I've worked in a lot of creative agencies and lots of different areas. This is absolutely unique. It's just the best people all coming together, doing a fantastic job. So I could not be more proud to be the CEO. Started off as a volunteer. Um, somebody called me up and said, "This fantastic new organisation. You know, I know that you're a lesbian, and you, you, you know, you're interested. And you've been in campaign groups before." So I thought, "Well, I, you know, I'll give them a go." And I met Kate Harris, and I met Bev, and they really, you know, they really had something to say. And I thought I should be able to help a little bit here. And I've always worked in advertising agencies, putting together ad campaigns, looking at branding, looking at campaign work. So I've always been really interested in understanding how to hone a message so that as many people as possible can understand it and, and gradually I worked more and more with the Alliance and I was um, invited to be on the management team and I was I was thrilled and then I applied for the for the role of CEO and I'm really proud to have been involved from the start and to have have met Kate and Bev and Malcolm and all the all the the people right at the heart who was who was starting the organization who founded it, who was, who was still absolutely central to it. LGB Alliance has, and myself personally are, are in no way, by, by any way of measuring anti-trans, what we are is pro-LGB. And our position is that people who are same-sex attracted, so lesbians, gay men and bisexual, have different needs to some of the other letters of the alphabet. All we would say is that our, our needs are particular and they're different and we deserve to have that support as well. And we think it helps all people involved if people's specific needs are catered for and not putting us all together in, in quite a patronising way into one great big uh, lump. I don't think it serves trans people well to do that. I don't think it serves LGB people well to do that. We're huge proponents of respectful free speech. We support the right of others to speak freely, whether or not they agree with us. We're often trying to set up conversations with um, organisations which disagree with us because we think it's healthy to get those ideas thrashed out in public. And we found that that's the best way to come up with solutions that work for everybody too. Solutions that make people happy. That's why we exist, I suppose, in part, is to put the joy back into being lesbian, gay or bisexual because it's, you know, it's fun and we're creative and, you know, we, we look at the world in a slightly different way because we're slightly outside the norm and, that, you know, that, that means it can be exciting and it can be fun and we can be creative. We want to sort of rally around the spirit of that and be positive and look for the future. Something that I feel particularly strongly about is being able to give lesbians the autonomy and the right and the space to be able to meet other women in a, in a women-only space. And difficult as it is for some people to believe, a lot of people hate that. A lot of people think lesbians should not be allowed to meet together unless it's more of an inclusive event. And what inclusive means is including people that aren't lesbians and specifically including men who identify as lesbians. Now, I don't think there's anybody else tackling this quite the same way as we are. There's nobody else for whom it's as important, that's for sure. And it's important to remember that it's not just lesbians, but, but this is happening, this is coming down the road for gay men as well. And we're already getting letters and, and emails from gay men saying, hey, you know, I went to something which I believed was a men-only event, and there was, there was a woman there. There was a, there was a woman identifying as a gay man. Hugely uncomfortable, very, very awkward situation.
People ask us, if I donate some money, what are you actually going to spend it on? So it's a really interesting question. We want to be respons responsible and we want to get results. So if, for example, we were campaigning on an issue such as highlighting the dangers of puberty blockers, which being prescribed to gender non-conforming kids, and it's a huge issue. If we were to do something like run a press ad, so we have to pay, pay for that to be placed. We have to pay for um, travel, for people to go and... and lobby MPs or talk to talk to policy makers and then there are other things that we organize such as our national conference which is third one is at the QE2 center we have to pay for the venue we have to pay for the catering we have to pay for the audio visual and it's well worth it because it's the biggest gathering of lesbians gay men and bisexuals in the country annually it's a, it's really really important it's where we all get together we can talk about the issues that matter we also have smaller events that we run, such as social events all around the country, so we're not too London-centric. I want to make people feel um, proud of what we do.